Yo, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna show you guys how to make crazy dark chords and melodies. I'm gonna just give you guys some crazy music theory sauce for making dark melodies. And as always, before we get started, make sure to go tap in with me on social media. Give me a follow at Enviro, but let's lock in. A lot of people are really afraid of music theory for some reason, because they think it's like a bunch of rules that you can't break. And that's the biggest misconception because music theory is just guidelines. And once you understand it, you can actually go crazy and unlock a bunch of swag. Am I allowed to play this note or will most give me detention <laughs> come on dog you're like I would say dark melodies are probably one of the simplest to make because you can actually focus on just one chord and build on top of that like link and build so let's say we're in C minor you can just focus on your root chord and play on top of that So the first thing that I want to talk about is having a good foundation for your melody and that pretty much comes down to playing good lower intervals but these are the three most important intervals that you got to remember once you get these down you'll understand how useful they are so obviously you can just play an octave but I would say a stronger interval is your perfect fifth so this so you're taking the root and then your five and this is a perfect fifth and then next a slightly less strong is your perfect fourth this is not as strong just because it wants to resolve down. The fifth is more stable. It doesn't want to move as much. And then you got your minor six. So the way I'm getting these is I'm literally counting from the one. So one, two, three, four, five, and then five, six. So I would say these are the three most important intervals for dark melodies. These intervals would be the same in any key. So like in A minor, we would have... War. So we got the five, six, perfect fourth, and then. So on the bottom, you can play these intervals and like really be subtle with it. You don't have to do too much. This is just to hold down a simple foundation. So like. And then up top, you can solo over it like. That brings me to my next point is like if you have a simple foundation then you can really go crazy up top and you can focus on making the top melody more dissonant and closed and by closed i mean like if the notes are closer together then it's going to produce more of a closed sound versus these intervals are really open it's a wider distance usually more closed intervals sound good up top because it's less muddy so you can really play dissonant stuff and it sounds good if i play that with a good foundation this is what you get Obviously that might be a little too much, but if I juice it up, like. There's just so much stuff you can explore with that. And you can also build these intervals, not only from your root, but from other notes as well. So this is our C minor one, but you can play other fifths that are also in the scale. So like. That literally sounds like some medieval music. Your highness in viral type so if i move the intervals i can get something like this that leads me to my next point which is chords so the most important chords in a minor scale are your root your fourth and then your fifth which you can either play minor or major so that's minor but i can also play a major so if i play a major that's going to be a dominant seven usually so the one chord is called the root, but then my five chord is called the dominant. And the five chord leads really well back into the one chord again. So instead of playing it like that, I'm just adding a seventh. That's because this leads really well down. That's probably one of the most recognizable like chord progressions. There's so many songs that use this. Basically, you just start in your home chord and then you can do whatever you want. And then once I want to go back to my home chord, I can use the dominant chord. Some examples of that are this. Pick out a phone, baby. Classic flam and tug. I got another example for you old heads.
But if your great grandpa watching this and he was born before John Lennon, I got another example from Beethoven. <sighs> Sorry, I butchered that, but uh, you know, we still locked in. As you can see, even Beethoven was hip on this in the 1700s because Symphony Number no. 5 in C minor, you know, uses the one chord and then goes to the dominant five. So definitely explore that. That's another cool sound that you can use a lot. So now to fit all this together, you gotta play like some top melodies and just like interlock. Make the chords and melodies like interlocked, you know, lock in. All I'm doing is literally soloing over the C minor scale. So the next concept that I want to talk about is making your chords more fluid and you just kind of talk to each other more. Chord talk to And one way you can do that is like by adding transition chords. So a really good transition chord is your diminished chord. So basically it's just a regular minor chord with the five flatted. So instead of this, you have this. You know, if I have my C minor, let's say. I can lead into this with a diminished chord. That's one semitone below it. So this one. Also relating to the dominant chord, as you can see, it's part of the dominant chord. Or if I wanna go to my F minor, I can use another diminished chord that's one below it. So, you know, like. Or like any other chord. Diminished chords are really cool, like definitely learn them. And then you can do crazy stuff like that. A way to start a really simple melody would be just to play a really simple foundation down here. And then up here, I can just play a C minor chord and then choose notes that are in between those. So the last sauce that I'm gonna spill today is these sus chords are hella important. So with these two notes, we build these chords that are called the sus chords. I'm just replacing the E flat with either an F or a D and you get like a suspended chord. So this is a sus two. And this is a sus4, literally because you're putting the second note in here, and then the fourth note. This is important because this is another thing you can use to navigate around and link chords together. So like... Or you can use them just to juice up a regular minor chord. Like, just play it every once in a while. It's ultimately just good to use these to build up tension and then resolve it so you can just like go. Obviously it resolves better in a major scale. But it's still hella useful in minor scales. So many dark melodies are built on top of the sus chord, like the Goosebumps theme. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this video. I discussed a lot of sauce, maybe too much sauce. So if you guys missed anything, make sure to rewatch the video, you know, take some notes. The test is gonna be next Monday, so make sure to tap in. It's gonna be 50 multiple choice Scantron and two short answers. So make sure you study for that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.